Welcome to Warhammer, a world for men by men, where everything is manly. Loud guns, loud armor, loud targets. Rip and tear objectively bad alien bugs with your big manly biceps. Even the walking is loud and manly. A world that will kick your ass if you suck. A world so manly, even the women are men. The game is a throwback to when a fun game was just a fun game and it wasn't also a psychological experiment to see how much time and money you could spend before you burnt out on FOMO mechanics and a bunch of extra systems that don't really need to be there. You want some cosmetic in the game? Buy it with an in-game currency instead of hoping to get it through a loot box or buying it at a ridiculously high price, most likely with real money, instead of video game money. I play the game because it's fun, not to scratch the itch in my brain a battle pass gives me. The game is flawed and lacking in content, but what is here is really fun and satisfying. Turning tyrannids into gory paste and chaos into dust. Campaign and performance. The campaign is good, its presentation is really well executed. Awesome cutscenes and facial performance. Even if it is just variations of Angry Man. There was nothing in the script that made me go ugh or de-immersed me from the story. The main flaw I had with it was playing it close to the release when the performance issues were pretty bad. But despite that, it was pretty good. Opening with this awesome cutscene of the Tyranid starting the invasion, and I'm just thinking, hell yeah, I'm gonna kill all of them. Then I actually play the game, it's kinda like playing a slideshow. The performance has improved a lot since then, but I really hate that companies keep releasing their games with such terrible performance. Especially if you're paying extra for advanced access. And my campaign experience was massively soured by that poor performance. As for the story itself, I enjoyed it. I wanted to know what happened to Titus and what he knows about the MacGuffin. But when it comes to Warhammer stories, to me it's all just white noise that translates to mankind good, everyone else bad. Kill Xenos for my god, Corpse Emperor, Jesus the Christ. Okay, the actual plot is Titus from the first game gets reinstated into the Ultramarines. Space Marines are basically the Doom guy, but a legion of them. Big, strong, and love killing demons and aliens. Titus got thrown out because Leandros behaved like any regular person in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. But so far the main goal in the campaign is to destroy the Zerg invasion. I mean, Tyranids. But they're basically the same thing. A hive mind that wants to spread out and eat everything. Mostly brainless enemy that's fun to kill. Then they discover the MacGuffin that Titus is somehow familiar with. It's been a decade since I played the first game, so maybe the MacGuffin was in that game. I don't know. The Adeptus Mechanicus is trying to turn this dark relic that radiates black smoke into a weapon. This is a bad idea, but the Adeptus Mechanicus makes pretty much everything the Empire uses, so they can do what they want. Arch Magos, it is imperative you evacuate immediately. Detroit will not leave without the data. Relocate to my facility. I will instruct Silvervox. And all the interactions with the Mechanicus in this game further cements that the Adeptus Mechanicus is my favorite thing in Warhammer. Arch Magos, the entrance is inoperative. Then the followers of the Chaos God Sinch come in and they are interested in the MacGuffin. Sinch Chaos. These are the guys that invented Calculus. They are doing Calculus 4 and it actually makes sense to them. 
They must be purged, and the wider humanity must not learn of them and their doings. If the followers of Sinch are interested in this thing, then it's probably going to lead to something bad. So it needs to be kept away from them. Chasing the MacGuffin around, fighting a Tyranid invasion, and stopping whatever Sinch wants. Whatever that is. Sinch doesn't even know what Sinch wants. Don't think about it, just kill Sinos. That's the campaign. The campaign is just one big continuous awesome battle, and I would be a lot more happy with it if performance had been better. The game introduces my new favorite character in the entire Warhammer universe, the Dreadnought. I love him. Any moment that has him in it is a good moment. That's also true for the Arch Magos. I wish we saw more of these two. Then there's that cutscene with the Ultramarines fighting Chaos. It was awesome. Campaign worth playing just for that. But man, they followed it up with the worst final boss I think I've ever played. I felt like I was just dodging and waiting most of the time. Oh, sorry. Spoiler. Campaign good. Please stop releasing your games while they still have terrible performance. It kind of ruined the campaign for me. Operations mode, combat and progression. Okay, let's talk about the combat, but first, the controls. When I first played the game, I got my ass kicked, and that's mostly because the controls are really weird, but I cannot think of how it could be different. Aside from changing the aiming to be on mouse button 4 instead of the mouse wheel. Using the mouse wheel as a button sucks. I'm used to the controls now, but it was not a seamless process. The reason the controls are weird is because Q has the special ability, E is the interact button, left mouse for shooting, right mouse for melee, space for dodging, C for blocking, and shift for running. The two weird things here are C and the mouse wheel. I mentioned a good alternative for aiming earlier, but for blocking I can't think of a better place to have it than C. That would be actually comfortable to use. It's jarring at first and then becomes somewhat natural. I've played the game for 40 hours and I still occasionally press the wrong button. Maybe I'm just stupid. Now, the actual combat. You are fighting hordes of enemies and there is a lot going on. So you are going to get hit. That's why you have armor that regenerates after 25 seconds of not taking damage. And you can get some armor back from executions, like with a pistol shot you can do by knocking enemies down, or perfect parrying. And the really satisfying ones you can do after dealing enough damage to big boys. So good. And perfect parrying is also really satisfying, and it insta-kills minor enemies. You can also perfect dodge roll for those pistol executions, but I found it less reliable. Dodging is much more useful for just avoiding all damage by spamming it. There is something pretty funny about a big chad space marine in that huge bulky armor spam rolling around through a horde of enemies for a full minute until my teammates respawn. It's probably the fact that it actually works. Mostly. Your health doesn't regenerate, so you need healing items, which are few and far between, and spread among three big space boys. So you get hit a lot, so your health probably goes down a lot. And that's really fun if you have a teammate that sucks up all the healing items like a Dyson B7. But most of the time, me and my teammates are really nice about it and ping the heal so others can take it. Which just devolves into a who can be the nicest competition. Where we stand there going, no, you take it, I've only lost half my health. 
No, I don't need health. I'm a bulwark. I don't die. No, I couldn't possibly take it. And then the teammate with full health comes along and takes it. Nice guys really do finish last. Classes, there are six of them. They are somewhat different and you can mostly get what they're about by their special ability. Tactical, does an AoE that marks enemies so they take extra damage. He's a jack of all trades with the most options for weapons in his loadouts. Assault, special ability, disappointment. In the campaign the jump pack was awesome, you were flying all over the place and really high up in the air. But in operations the assault just flies 2 meters in the air and slams down into an area. It's pretty strong but still a disappointment. Highly mobile and hits hard. Vanguard, the world's lamest grappling hook. Instead of swinging around like a goofball or using it to climb, you shoot it at a living creature or a wall and then it pulls you forward at Mach 10 so you slam into it. Highly mobile and hits hard. Hey, I did say somewhat different. Bulwark, he puts a flag down that regenerates your armor. He's the tank. If a Bulwark player knows where the parry button is, then he probably won't die. Sniper. He goes invisible. Obviously, he has snipers. Really good single target ranged weapons. But he's also kind of like a rogue in an RPG. Sneaking around the battlefield going for backstabs. Or killing big guys in 1v1s. Showing up to a gunfight with a knife is stupid. Unless you're a space marine. And if you can go invisible, then it's actually a great idea. Heavy, the class I've played the least. He can put a barrier in front of him that blocks ranged attacks. He can walk around with it. He's all about heavy weapons. Big melter guns and machine guns. Stuff that shreds crowds and big boys. All these classes level up and then become better at the things that make them special. Like the Bulwark becomes more tanky and his flag can revive teammates. And the Sniper will get stealthed on a perfect dodge. This is your progression along with the weapons. Use the guns and they get experience and this is where you'll get to scratch your build crafting itch. Weapons will feel much better after you progress them, but they start off pretty good. There's also some currency stuff and that's all good except armory data. I hate armory data as a mechanic. It's a time waster and encourages you to play certain maps because they let you get data faster or easier. You have to look around for them in levels and that sucks. Either you are desperately looking for it during a chaotic battle, or just running into every corner in the map looking for it. Or looking at a guide online. You do get one armory data when you kill a miniboss, and I like that. Fighting a miniboss is fun. Checking every corner is not. I'd prefer having to fight a miniboss for it every time instead of looking around every time. I feel like you should get at least one data by default. Feels awful finishing a mission and not getting any data. Back to combat, the enemies. Most of them are a fair and fun challenge, a reflex challenge. Whether you win or lose is mostly based on your reactions. The only real strategy is the Imperium's political philosophy. Stick together and kill everything else before it becomes a problem. Most of the time you will be successful by just killing everything as soon as you see it. But if that's not an option, it will be mostly down to your class. If you're the bulwark, then focus on big melee guys and the swarm. Sniper, then focus big ranged guys. There are some enemies that will shake this up, like mini bosses and special enemies, who will attack you fast or in a slightly weird or harder way than usual. But they still follow the reflex thing and are manageable, and just a nice change of pace. But then you have Soanthropes. 
They spam hard-hitting attacks that are weirdly hard to dodge. And they're also tanky. I hate them. I hate dodging for 5 minutes and shooting once or twice between dodges. They also fly, so you can't smack them around. As a bulwark, he's my kryptonite, because I have very little ammo to deal with it, ending with me rolling around and waiting for my teammates to take care of it. Anytime I see Zoanthropes, I just think, oh great, here's a minute of dodging. There's usually two of them at the same time, it's the worst enemy in the game. And they also shield each other, and that's really annoying. But I still like fighting the Tyranids more than the Chaos. When you fight Tyranids, they have this great thing where if you kill a big guy, the small guys also die. That does not happen with Chaos, and that makes them less fun to fight. And honestly, that is mostly my reason for liking Tyranids more. But it's also that Chaos has stronger and more frequent range. I wrote some stuff here complaining about the minor shield guys, but they got nerfed. The amount of them and their ability to block attacks also got nerfed. And now Chaos is a lot more fun to fight. Great job on that one, guys. Bosses. There's only two. The Hive Tyrant. It's a lot of dodging and parrying, but you get executions for that. He's fine. The boss in the Reliquary sucks. Enemy spam and an AoE spam while doing a really uninteresting boss puzzle. Three pictures get highlighted and you have to find the terminal with that picture and interact with it. And then you're allowed to hit the boss. And only for like 10 seconds. So you have to go through this process 10 or more times. It's not fun. Overall, they did a great job with enemies here. They're fun to fight and hit the balance on annoyance really well. Annoying enough that they're satisfying to kill, but not so annoying that it's unfun. Except for the Soanthrope and the Reliquary boss. Matchmaking. It's mostly little annoyances like queuing for a match and getting a match, but that match is really just you being moved into another player's waiting room. It's not really a problem, I'm just impatient. But what is a problem is me getting match made with people using the same class as me. Because one of us has to change. I want to play this class. Don't put me into matches where I have to change. The operations mode is great, and it's why I'll keep playing this game every now and then for quite a while. It has some problems, but they're mostly avoidable and based on the new patch, the devs are gonna actually fix them. So that it's more fun for the player, which is the opposite of the Helldivers 2 philosophy of fixing problems by making it less fun for the player. The operations mode just needs more content, and that's why I'm not gonna play too much for now, because I want more and better maps. There are only 6 maps right now, I don't wanna blow my load on 6 maps. The repetition of that will make me very bored of the game. Operations is the selling point of the game, and the occasional Xenos ethnic cleansing sounds really good and Space Marine 2 is the game I'll do that in. Unless I'm in a fantasy itch. Then I have to play Total Warhammer for three weeks straight. PvP. I haven't played a lot of it and it isn't what I'm here for, but it's better than I thought it would be. It is a very solid slow-paced third-person asymmetric shooter. This is a lot more tactical than the PvE. Working with your team and using different classes to get the edge on the enemy team. Some classes will feel better than others. Like personally, I preferred Sniper and Tactical. Mainly Sniper. Going invisible and having a powerful ranged weapon is just really strong. Plus, his flashbang is just the worst thing you can do to someone. A lot of it may be down to me just sucking on the other classes and just not getting what they're supposed to do. 
Bulwark is great as an annoying threat that you can't just shoot to make him go away. Unless someone gets behind him. He blocks bullets while other teammates get kills. Classes have the same abilities as PvE so they work the same. The team that sticks together is usually the one that wins. So it's about teamwork. It has some similarities with Overwatch in that way. The PvP is pretty basic. Capture three zones, capture the one rotating zone, and deathmatch. And I personally would like to see a PvPvE mode. Have it be a big battle between Chaos and Men. Where Chaos has their Minoris and Majoris, and Space Marines can have Cadians. And lesser Space Marines, I guess. That would keep that theme of big awesome battles going. And it would be a lot more memorable and separated from the basic PvP formula. But what we have here is decent. Gets the blood flowing a little, but not something I would stick around for. I don't have a lot to say about it. It doesn't really give that same satisfaction as the PvE. Although it is pretty satisfying to kill that annoying guy on the enemy team. There isn't really progression here, just level up your account and you unlock new guns to use. No class progression, so no depth in builds or anything like that. There is some nice interplay between class skills and equipment, but it just doesn't really grip me. It was laggy closer to release, but it's gotten a lot better. Conclusions Space Marine 2 is a fun game, and I really love what it is. The design of it in regards to the player. Every live service game that comes out, when you play them, it feels like the developers of the game were constantly asking themselves, how can we get more money out of the player? Sure, there are developers that work on making the game fun, but a lot of focus seems to be put into monetization. And sometimes even feels like they made the game less fun to encourage players buying stuff. I don't feel that at all here, because there is no monetization, really. It's all cosmetic, there are no guns or class upgrades locked behind the paywall. It's all earnable in-game. Player power is earnable, not buyable. And I love that. And I wanted to reward that, so I bought the gold edition. The only thing that leaves a bad taste in my mouth is the advanced access. Paying more to play the game early. I don't like that as a concept. Especially when the performance is so bad. But this isn't a problem if you give yourself the rule of only playing new games two weeks after they come out. This video took so long because I was waiting for them to fix the performance so I could actually enjoy what's good about the game. Space Marine 2 is a game made purely to be fun and respects the player. And you can see that in the statements the CEO made. He dislikes the way current games are made too. I love this game, and it's a lot of fun, it just needs more content. Be more fleshed out. And that's all coming, and it's going to be free. We need to reward games that don't go full cock into monetization. And it's very easy to do when the game is really fun. And that's what Space Marine 2 is. I recommend the game. It has some issues, but they've already fixed the most important issues I had with the game. Except the Soanthrope and Reliquary boss. Just make the Soans less tanky and rework the Reliquary boss into not being the worst boss ever made. Turning Tyranids into gory paste and chaos into dust just feels good. That's why you're getting this game. I give the game a Please release the Drukari as an enemy out of I just want to ethnically cleanse the Drukari. Is that so wrong? Like and subscribe, call me Uncle Brian and have an awesome day.